Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2. In this episode I hope to send those material kits over to our moon base so it can inflate and I've also picked up another contract related to the moon and that is this build a new orbital station around the moon. So that would be a good idea and I guess we'll be putting it into polar orbit just because and it needs uh, facility supporting five Kerbals, research lab, so that take, takes care of two of them, uh, antenna docking port and can generate power. So that's it, so we've already got the advance of 92,000 and completion gives us another 238,000. It's not much by way of profit but we can use the facility of course. And so let's take a look at the launch which I intend to put both things on. I want to launch the material kits as well as the station on a single launch. Okay, I have dubbed this Colonization 02. Colonization 01 sent over the two uh, little bases. And I forget if I've landed both of them. Maybe one is still in orbit. But anyway, uh, the station is up here. You can see it's got antennae. It's got these colonization construction ports, which I think can uh, sort of uh, seal themselves and are seem to be very configurable too. Um, yeah, so that is there. This is a salamander command pod with room for two. Then we have the life support tank, the research lab, and a tundra kerbitat. I picked the kerbitat because I wanted a good habitation time for our kerbals. You can see for two, uh, it's 300 days, and for six, it is 100 days. I don't have the supply container full. It's only 1,800, and that's because we do have a fairly heavy launch here. Yeah, I mean uh, 53 tons it looks like. And most of that's the material kits. This is the material kit lander. A little bit of skew I know. These are extra fuel pallets on the side here. I've dumped some fuel in because it's sort of clipping into the containers. I hope that doesn't make it explode. Uh, I've tweak scaled the terriers down to one meter because they were too big otherwise and we didn't need that much thrust anyway. Uh, so yeah, tweak scaled, and there we have connector ports. I put four just in case, but we might try and use the logistics system, in which case hopefully it will be able to draw the resources, the material kits from this with a direct connection, but just in case I wanted to have that option available. Other points of note, of course we have the landing struts like this. I think that should be fairly stable. Uh, we do have RCS, so this can return to orbit and dock with something else. It's got docking ports on both ends, so it, it can be very versatile, I hope. We've got auto strutting going on. This is auto strutting to root part. Um, this container is to the heaviest part and so forth. I've done some judicious auto strutting. Hopefully that'll keep things stable. Um, let me just uh, This is grandparent part. So this is the colonization heavy. So there's the colonization core and then uh, it's two boosters. Only the two boosters get recovered and we've I've added extra septrons just so that they don't collide into each other. There's a lot of floaty business going on here because procedural parts is like that. Let me try and get that back on. All right, well I think we might as well just see how it goes. 340,000 which is why I said that with the contract we're not really gonna get a bonus out of it well I guess one bonus is that we get to send the material kits along with this and basically the contracts paying for that so that's good as far as our Delta V is concerned it's a bit tight and that's why I dumped the extra life support the supplies so that's a question we really need this to get it pretty close to orbit. This does the poodle stage here does not have that much thrust to weight ratio. All right, I think that's enough talking. Um, I'm gonna sort this staging out, and then we'll take it out to the launch pad. All right, so here we are, and I have to confess I don't remember how this particular rocket launched last time. I presume it was all right because we did get the base modules over there. But it's been a while, uh, thanks to the fact that I went on vacation, since I last recorded a video in the in this series. So, yeah, 
All right, well, let's hope that everything is all right and I didn't forget anything. Uh, we are not launching any Kerbals with the station. We'll handle that transfer some other time. What we really need is, you know, I had built that, vi uh, that uh, vehicle that launched Kerbals directly from Kerbin to the surface of the moon at our moon base. What I, and actually had to be refueled in orbit. What we really need is a multi-step system, you know, a transport to and from Kerbin orbit and then uh, transport from our station down to the surface, that kind of thing might be a good idea. But we'll handle that in a bit. Let's uh, get going here. Everything seems to be in order. So... Hmm... I just thought of something. We don't really have any way of recharging our, um, our little lander craft. The station has solar panels, but our lander craft does not. Let me fix that. Okay, let me recover this. Alright, that's all fixed. SAS is on, throttle is up, and ignition. And off we go. I will assume Smart ASS can handle this until evidence to the contrary. I tried checking the center of lift and center of mass in the VAB, but the center of lift was stuck to the floor. So, no luck there. Looking smooth so far, past the speed of sound, approaching maximum dynamic pressure. Okay, getting ready for booster set. And separation. Okay, off they go. Let's make sure they don't slam into each other. They seem alright. Good thing I added the extra separatrons. And hopefully the parachutes will make them recoverable. Okay, fairing set. Off they go. Very good. You can probably thrall down now. Okay, I do want this stage to re-enter. So, well, let's give it a little bit more and off. Alright, so that will definitely bring it down. We're only wasting 66 meters per second. Separation. Okay, and ignition. And we can coast to apoapsis. Did I remember to put comm devices on this? I thought I had. But I might have replaced a part. Shoot. Well, we, uh, the probe core has a built-in comm. I had, I had put uh, antennae on some of the pods, but I think I replaced the pods or something. Okay, Poodle stage, bringing us to orbit. And that's good enough. Let me plot for the moon, and we have to remember to get into a polar orbit. Okay, we are getting ready for our transmooner burn, and checking our stages, the one that was supposed to be disposed of was disposed of, uh, costs uh, 39,000 funds, but the other two uh, were recovered. They, of course, the, the added cost, and you know the stage value is much more than the core stage, and that's mainly because of the parachutes. The parachutes cost quite a lot. So, yes, I, well, I don't really see, oh, there we go, 8,000 for the parachutes, and then, of course, there was an additional tank on top. All right, so, but actually, we don't have enough parachutes on those, so the recovery percentage is not quite as good as it could be. But still, uh, definitely better than nothing and recovered both of those boosters. So here we go, on to the moon. Of course, not that sensitive a transfer. I'm pretty sure the delta V reading here is incorrect. I think it's uh, adding the fuel here and the fuel here, even though this one isn't draining. So, yeah. I think we've got about, well, we've definitely got enough to head to the moon and make orbit, so that's the important bit. 
We also have a controller on here so it can dispose of itself or it could be used as a tug and refueled. I think there's a docking port in here if I'm right. Yeah, there's a docking port, there are solar panels. Solar panels, right? Yeah, there are solar panels. And everything. Hopefully communication somewhere. Do seem to be forgetting that part of it. Oh, uh, one thing people noted in the comments was the communication blackout because of plasma during re-entry. Thanks for noting that. I probably wouldn't have remembered, but I'll try to remember that in the future. Not gonna be too big a problem since this being colonization, most of our stuff is going to be crude. But yeah, just important to remember, just in case. Some of this stuff is going to come back uncrewed. It's not too hard to figure out how to make sure it's safe, regardless of the plasma blackout. I don't know, maybe this stage had more Delta V than I thought. I should rearrange the stages and see if that changes anything. Oh, there's interesting orbital stuff going on here. I think I'll just take that for now. Ah, there we go. Now it says 483 left in this stage. Alright, so that's what we really have, which is still enough to get into orbit around the moon, as expected. Alright, let's head over there. Alright, I took care of the orbital adjustment to put us into a polar orbit, and now we are approaching periapsis. And by the look of things, we could probably land at the base on the next orbit, if all goes well. Maybe uh, one or two orbits will get us right there. So let's get into lunar orbit first. The adjustment to get into uh, polar orientation was 130 meters per second, so we're going to have to continually plan for that each time we transfer over. Assuming we don't uh, manage a polar approach right off the bat from our trans-lunar injection. I really need to get the station contract pack so that we get some interesting contracts to do with this station. Okay. 82 by 55 or 56. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Going to decouple here. Transfer over to this thing. And we need to sidestep, uh, side, well, either way we'll do. And this stage will dispose of itself. I don't know, maybe we could keep it in orbit for other things. We don't need that part. So that's definitely going suborbital. The question is whether we uh, save this portion or not. I guess we should. Prograde. Okay, it has been saved and as far as solar panels go, but uh, it looks like I didn't add communication again. But it will be alive for now. And here's our station. So, did we fulfill the contract? Yes, we did. Now, our Minmus probe is still on its way to Minmus. That was a long transfer, so it's got quite a while before we have to do anything with it. That's going to cover the other contracts you see there. And, yep. Alright, so let's take care of delivering our material kits. I'm gonna say we're close enough, so let's prepare to have the lander go suborbital and hope that we're going to maintain communication. Okay, sufficient delta V, certainly. And if this was empty of material kits, it should be able to get back to orbit, assuming I don't use too much. So it was designed with that in mind. 
Bring our orbit down a little bit. That's a lot of little symbols. Hold on. Cannot transmit science. Direct connection. Comnet path. Bounce signal through relay. Okay. That seems fine. Okay. No, oh, our uh, communications is getting a bit stretched here. It's all right. We can actually slow down now and let the orbiting craft catch up. We have to get this pretty close for all the logistics stuff to work. So I believe uh, some comments noted that one reason we couldn't inflate stuff was because we didn't have an engineer present. So we might need to send an engineer over as well. But first things first, let's try and get this ready. And maybe, maybe we need an engineer as well. So that'll be another mission. I didn't want to send any Kerbals on this launch. I think we need to reassess the whole crew transfer system as well. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Other way, other way. Uh, okay. Um, I can't tell what my orientation is. There's a lot of confusion here. Let me just try and land. Okay, we have landed. That was a bit rough. Uh, we are not within pipe range of the base, but we should be within the range of the logistics. I think it was 150 meters or something like that, right? But as expected, we can't we can't expand the modules. But oh, uh, we have an engineer, Bill. Uh, so maybe Bill can do it. Bill. They uh, people in the comments said that Bill would be able to deploy. Okay, so Bill is able to deploy things. Okay. Deploy. Now I don't know if um, the material kits just need to be present or whether they were actually consumed. Let's have Bill board again. That's not it. Uh, the material kits were consumed. Okay, so we actually had to use the material kits. Now you can see it's empty. Unfortunately, I I underestimated how much Delta V I would need in order to land close enough at the base and it looks like we do not have enough to get back to orbit. We can fix that by getting some carbonite drilling going and refilling this as well as refilling our crew transport vehicle. But it looks like we don't need to uh, transport an uh, engineer. I forgot that Bill was here. I thought it was only Jeb because I was misunderstanding the comments. And yeah, uh, so how about habitation? How is this going to be? Uh, it looks like Jeb and Bill are good uh, for ha habitating this place for 102 days. Well, the, they only have 72 days of supplies though. But then again, there's probably, I don't know if it, how it's calculating the recyclings. Recycling. Uh, zero vessels shared within 150 meters, but that, I guess that's habitation space, not, uh, not resources because obviously we got the resources from the other vehicle. Okay, well that's a start. Uh, maybe if I start have common that'll improve things. Oh, five years. Well, um, uh, how about if I start have quarters? Twenty-three years. Um, start agroponics. We can't. We're missing fertilizer. Um, well, uh, they're producing mulch. Well, we can start Recycler. 
No, we really, we really need power. We need much more electro. Oh, all these modules. Hold on. Um, stop agroponics. Yeah. Okay. 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 Hold on. Stop. Stop. Okay. We've got a dire electric charge situation because of our location here. We will need. I think uh, R3 King mentioned RTGs. We need some power, and we don't really need that much lighting because the base is now very bright. Though maybe just to make landing safer might be might be good to add some more lights. Okay, well this is a start. Uh, let me go back to the space center and see what I need to do next. All right, everyone. So this is my solution to the power situation. It is currently upside down because the ventral drilling assembly that we have on here does not have a node at the bottom. So this is the carbonite drill. Very much convincing. And of course this is a lander and it is currently upside down with the fuel tank here. Then a carboelectric generator there or carb carboelectric generator? Carboelectric generator. Pretty big generator, 500 units of power per second. And we also have a carbonite converter to convert it to LFO if necessary. These are carbonite tanks on the side. Total carbonite capacity is only 400, but that should be all right as long as we keep the drill running. Just in case, I've got two fuel cells and solar panels. Not enough to actually run the base off of. We really need the carboelectric generator to do that. As you can see, it's got 1,378 meters per second, which should be enough after we get into orbit around the moon. And to do that, we've got basically the same sort of core, except no boosters on this one. So same as the, the colonization heavy, except this is just your normal colonization, uh, call it colonization nine. It does have the nine engines at the bottom. So we are going to try and recover this first stage. It's got the parachutes and all, but we are also going to be ending up pretty far out by the time it tries to come back in so recovery is actually a little bit dodgy but anyway um, let me make sure to uh, get rid of the interstage nodes on that and we should be ready to go alright let's see what happens looks like a nighttime launch and you'll note that, of course, the controller is upside down, but we do have a controller on the launcher itself. So let me try and uh, control from here, and that should solve the problem. And I'll just launch at nighttime. We'll try and uh, get the ambient light up a bit. Here we go. SAS on. Thrall is up. And launch. Okay. Okay, and that's the first stage. Set and ignition of the poodle. Okay, and fairing set. I did put lights on the lander. Also, I did put antennae. And before I forget, let me extend antennae. Ooh, uh, it might be a little bit too early for that. Looks all right though. Okay, and completing orbit, engine shutdown, 118 by 90, and let me plot for the moon. I'm pretty sure we have enough, uh, well, okay, I don't know exactly, well, okay, I think we have enough delta V, yes. I think I understand how it's calculating the delta V right now. So, yeah, let's do this. Okay, here we go for the moon. Uh, we could afford to wait a little bit longer. We do have one fuel cell running, by the way. And taking a look at this message, it seems like our core stage was recovered at a good velocity, so no problem there. Okay, here we go. That should be good. Alright, 85 kilometer periapsis at the moon. Once again, not, not uh, polar. We'll have to adjust that once we get there. We could adjust it halfway, but it's no good trying to adjust it here. Okay, so on we go. No problem with the electric charge situation. We've got 
solar panels out, fuel cell running. Okay, we're going to make orbit now. And it looks like we're pretty much set to land at the, at the base. Once again, we're pretty much in line with it, so... Okay, let's make this quick. Separation. Whoa! Oh, it got knocked a little bit askew for some reason. Even though it... Oh, uh, oh it reoriented itself, that's why. Okay. Alright, I get it. Okay, this is already pointing retrograde. So I'm going to have it bring... Oh! I didn't mean to do that. Um... So like... Okay, this is still running. Uh, okay, that's a problem. Um... Okay, we're free, we lost solar panels, but... Alright. I don't know what's gonna happen to that, but that was... I should have paid more attention to where this thing was going. Well, it's gonna crash into the thing now. I wonder why I lost communication with it briefly. Well, the signal strength is pretty bad. Okay, well, this is just gonna crash into the surface. Let's focus on this, which seems to still be intact except for the solar panels. Um, electric charge is diminishing, so I'm going to run the second fuel cell. Oh, did we lose a uh, communication relay? I mean, a uh, dish? Yeah, it's broken. We've only got one dish. Okay, well, we need to boost up right now. Now we'll go to that periapsis and then bring down our apoapsis. Assuming we have communication at that point. If we want this to work, we once again need to get within 150 meters. I remember landing at my moon base in my original colonization series and having that thing be a huge lag monster starting once we entered render range at 2.25 kilometers. How times have changed. I think I'm trying to be adamant about landing really close to it. Okay, we have landed. And 31 meters it looks like. Still not quite as close as I would need to be to run a pipe. But okay, let's see. Um, deploy drill. Okay. Start carbonite drill. Okay, and activate generator. Or start generator. There we go. And we've, we're getting electric charge and a surplus of carbonite. And so we can stop the fuel cell. Yep. We won't fill up on liquid fuel and oxidizer yet. Okay, the base though is recharging. Okay, good. We're getting more electric... Well, is that because of the solar panels? Let's retract our solar panels. Oh, yeah. We were recharging because of solar panels. By the look of it. Yeah. Okay. Now, I know there are power distribution units and other parts related to the colonization pack, the USI mods, so I guess I'll have to deploy those. It does not look like I can simply simply do this sort of thing, but maybe if we connect it with a pipe it'd work? We'll have to nudge it a little bit closer maybe. Uh, well, let's see. Um, Jeb? Not Jeb, uh, Bill... 
I want to check Bill's inventory. He'll need a screwdriver or something. Or not a screwdriver, a drill. It looks like I don't have a drill, so I don't think we can just uh, slap the ports on right now. At least it's all recharging, but as soon as I start anything, let's just start Hab Common. Yeah, it starts diminishing the electric charge. Okay, well, I've gotten some good information from the comments so far, so tell me about this situation where we have... Wow, that's really precarious. Anyway, um, yeah, we, we have this thing generating plenty of electric charge. Um, yeah, it's got quite a bit more capacity than it's currently using and we're getting a surplus of carbonite. We could generate eight times more power than we currently are right now because it's only supplying this right now. But uh, yeah, how do we get the power from here over to there? Maybe I just have to send over some drills so that... I don't know. Uh, did, uh, did you have any inventory? No. Yeah, maybe I could just uh, remove some of the, what are they called, connector ports from here. We've got these little guys, these connector ports. Could unplug them and then uh, slap them onto the Cobro electric generator and then connect it to the base. Well, I guess we have to shut off the hab as well. How's their uh, situation? Interesting. We don't have that hab going, and we don't have hab quarters going, nor the high, uh, agroponics or anything. But this still says that they're okay to habitat here for 153 days. Only 71 days of supplies though. And home for 23 years. Well anyway, priority is to figure out the electric charge situation, so I'll try and do that in the next episode along with our Minmus probe. The Scanrite needs to get to Minmus and fulfill our only extant contracts, and so we'll take care of that next time. Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.